everyone, we're down at the shop today to talk about our next video. And uh, in this video today, we're gonna talk about my favorite class that we have is Viper Jet. This is a brass weighted car <clears throat> where we put weights in the front of the car and replace the traction magnets with weights. The car is set up a lot like a super stock or a spec racer with a flexi chassis, lower tires, uh, soft rears, 723 gearing, but the kicker is we run them on 12 volts. But really fun car, they step out in the turns and they're a real handful to drive, but we're gonna build one today and, and see what we can run on our shop track. So follow me over to the build hall and we'll get started. Okay, here we are in the build hall. So let's go over the tools we're gonna use today to put this thing together. So basically use the same tools to put every car together. Uh, we're gonna have our press here we're gonna press our bushing into our in bell with it. Needle nose, we put the front O-rings on and also the guide pin in. Zacto, I use to trim the little burr that gets pushed out from the gear sometimes. Brush spreader for brush spreading. <clears throat> Motor install tool to push back the hangers and, and install the in bell. Pinion tool to pull the pinion back. This is my little tweak tool to tweak the in bell. It's just a screwdriver with a, the center cut out. Diamond hone, break the in bell in. Tire press to put the rear end together. Some lightweight lube for the bushings and some heavier weight lube for the gear and axle. So that's the tools we're gonna use and uh, let's get into this Viper Jet. <clears throat> All right, so getting started in assembly here with the Viper Jet. Just snap the guide pin in first. Standard guide pin. This is our <clears throat> flexi chassis. So the Viper Jet actually, it's actually a lot different than our V-Spec or our production modified, which share a lot of the same parts. Our Viper Jet right off the bat <clears throat> goes into our flexi chassis doesn't have traction magnets it gets a low pro shoe right off the bat uh, gets seven thou pickup springs which are lighter than our v-spec which have eight thou and then flexi timing bracket flexi magnet clip we put a little bit lower front and rear tires on it. This is a, our 432S1 for the rear and a 342 front for the, the front end. And then our axle assembly, we actually don't shim it. We just use our T-Boss and it works perfect. Viper Jet, we're only running on 12 volts, six ohm armature. It's not demanding that much out of the gear. The axle's not flopping around a lot because there's not much torque there. And uh, it's a great class. The parts last a long time. You hardly ever have to change a pinion. You hardly ever have to snap a new axle into it because your crown gear is wasted. Uh, as long as the car is set up, you can run the same Viper Jet for a long time. And because they're, because they're 12 volt cars, you can put a real nice body on it and not have to worry about someone nerfing you in the corner or, or you nerfing yourself into the wall but some of my nicest cars are viper jets just because i i'm confident that the body won't get hammered but next we'll just flip this over throw our sevens in here i can pull them apart from each other If your springs ever get stuck together, you just I just try to pinch each side and twist them lefty loosey to get them undone. It usually does the trick. All right, our low pro shoe. Just put it on the front hanger first, and then push down and back until it clicks. So same with the other one. Very important on a Viper Jet, when you assemble this car not to 
not to tweak the chassis, the shoe, anything. It's very important on, on every car, but on a Viper Jet especially because they're running on 12 volts. They're going a lot slower. They don't have traction mags in them. So the car really needs to be smooth and flat. So we'll just flip our car over here. So next step in this build would be to put our front weights in before we put the axle in. So these weights just drop in. Drop it in there, okay. Now we'll assemble our front end. As always, I take some smooth pliers. We're gonna put the O-ring on, and I'm not gonna I'm not going to force it on where the o-ring spins, I'm just going to kind of work it to right there and then we're just going to spread it and pop it in without twisting it or anything and then same thing with taking it out as smooth as we can. O-rings are molded so they have the mold line go down them. And that's what makes the front end vibrate, is if that thing is, if it's twisted around it as it goes around the tire because the O-ring was twisted when it got put on, it's gonna make the front end go like this, but sm a smaller scale, and it's gonna make your car vibrate. So then I'll just work the O-rings in, <clears throat> and then just pinch. And I'm not doing anything here other than feeling for a bent axle or an o-ring that's not quite seated so that just feels great i can't feel any vibration or jumping around or anything so pop it into our short wheelbase and we'll leave quite a bit of slop on there so next we need to put our bushing in our end bell I'll just start by making sure these brush arms are even. Okay. Throw it in our brush spreader. And seat it. Just want to check that it's nice and even. Looks like it's seated really well. Just push push this brush arm down so that it doesn't hit the the calm or the calm ring. Okay, now I'm just gonna spread this. If you buy an in bell from us, this is already done. So you won't have to worry about tweaking it, but since we're building this car from scratch getting a little <clears throat> a little sneak peek behind the scenes okay and then I just want to I just want to pull this arm down see where that one stops stops about halfway through the same with that one so that's a good tweak now every Every ready to run car we sell, we pre pre break in the in bell for you, which makes our cars really fast out of the box. So this is all we're doing here is we're just breaking in these brushes on this. A little bit more. Okay. Blow that dust out of there. Put our tool away. All right. 
So next we'll just throw our timing bracket on there. All right. And I don't, I don't lock tight the pinion on a Viper jet. It's because I don't need to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the pinion on right now. So it's, it's on the little edge right there and I'm just gonna push it all the way down. So our pinion's on. Make sure you put your, your bushing on there first or you have to pull your pinion back off. All right, so I'm just gonna sp spread these brushes and put our motor in. Put our level four magnets on here, the white dot to the passenger side. Okay, and right here on, on our hotter cars, I would put our thrust ring in, but we don't put one on a Viper jet just to let it be freer and, and flex a little bit more, which helps with the overall handling. So <clears throat> we're ready to install this. So we're just gonna locate the snout first, let it go down, grab our motor install tool, reach underneath, push that hanger forward, push the other hanger forward. Let's see. go just reach back here push the bushing in where it needs to go and then just reach over on each side make sure our that ear is all the way down or this will be give you problems and almost there there we go okay hope this side came out there we go all right now I'm to this point as always I'm just gonna pop it in and then reach back here and make sure the bushings in I think I knocked a shoe off there we go so as you saw there I struggled a little bit getting that ear to fit behind the hanger but I didn't give up I just kept working it until it made enough space to do it all without having to damage this ear at all because that's where our power is going to come from so I can show you a little trick if you accidentally crush that ear that you can do if I grab a body pin here So just grab a fat, a fat body pin, and I'm gonna find the little hole that the that it makes, and I'm just gonna shove this right through that thing, which is gonna it's gonna force the ear away from the in bell and into the hanger. And that actually makes quite a bit of contact on there. Don't stab yourself while you do this. So there we go. So that didn't need it, but it definitely brought it out a little bit. But there's a, tr a trick for you. If you smush those ears down, it's not the end of the world. Don't order a new end bell. Just push a pin in there while the car is assembled and put them back together. All right, so at this point, because the rear bushing is exposed, I'm gonna take my opportunity to put some oil on them. Just a dab on the front, dab on the rear. Just work it around a little. Next, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put our magnet clip on before we put the weights in, I'll show you the trick. 
So we're just going to put this on, push it across and down. And then we have something like this. So now what I'm going to do, because our weights are round, is put it on top like that, line it up, and just push it in there. And that's all we do to install these weights on this car, real fast. Uh, if you try it the other way, if you have tried it the other way, I'm sure that you, you know how hard it can be to keep that in there while you're working on the other side trying to put it in. So that's a good trick. Put the magnet clip on first and then just pop the weights in there. So now we can set our car to the side, get our rear end assembly out. Put our gear hub in there first. We're using a 23 tooth gear on this car. So, like always, I'm just gonna spin while I'm spinning and putting more pressure on it till it finds its way, and then I'm just gonna drive it in there. Okay, check for any Harry's. I don't see any on that one. Oh, you know what? I forgot a tool for our T-Boss. So we need the T-Boss hub. Here we go. So with a T-Boss, I'm just gonna hold it kind of like a drill press there. Locate our axle on the T-Boss and then put it in there we go. So now we're set up on the T-Boss. The, the best you can do with the T-Boss is just slowly run it in until it finds its path. And what we're going to do with the T-Boss also, so that it doesn't get too tight or loose, is we're just going to keep going until I, I visually see it, but I'm also going to feel it stop right there. Don't push anymore. And that's right where you want the T-Boss to be. If the T-Boss is too tight, it'll pinch the nipple on the end of the, the pinion and create some serious drag. And if it's too loose, it's gonna be too loose and you're gonna eat up pinion gears and, and crown gears. So throw our rim on. Oh, there we go. This part, I actually just snap it in the car Watch that weight. There we go. It's the same thing. Put it in the car. Run it in until it's as close as you're comfortable with to that weight. Now keep in mind with a with a T-boss you're going to have a little bit more side to side play than you are if you shim the axle. So put everything together and look at it. Use the side slop and just make sure that your rim isn't running into the that weight. So next we're just going to reach under and pull the pinion out. I went a little bit too far on purpose. So see where am I there I am so your armature is always going to have a little bit of play front and rear so right there we have room between the the gear tooth and the t-boss but when I run it in it hits it it gets close so with a t-boss there's a fine line with how much you can pull your pinion out so we're going to try again when you shim the axle and you don't have a t-boss on there you don't have it there to run into so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the motor to the rear while I pull the pinion out and just go probably within about 20 thousandths of it and it's never gonna over extend that 
but then you also want to check on the front end pull it to the front and make sure you still have enough teeth area on that gear that it's not gonna not gonna strip it that's perfect it's right where we want it okay so we're done with this pull our slip-ons out so I'm gonna take the axle off of the car for this on our slip-on tires they have a flat shiny side and then they have a radius on one side so you probably can't tell but that's that's the radius side and this is a flat shiny side oops sorry this is a flat shiny side there you go you see that nice gloss and this is a radius side it's a little bit flatter and you can see a perfect radius on the corner of the tire but anyway why i'm picking at that is your flat shiny side always goes in towards the gear you want your radius on the outside so we're going to push these on and we're not done yet you want to take your fingernail put it inside of that bead and spin to get that whole tire inside of that bead both sides but wait there's more <laughs> okay so just like the front end now I'm gonna run these slip-ons in as I'm pushing down the tires spreading and it's filling in the area of the rim if I skip this step and I don't I don't get lucky and nail the slip-on on there perfectly the first time, which hardly ever happens for me. I'll put it on the track and it, it will sound like a bike with a baseball card in its spoke going down the straightaway and it's gonna have no almost no leg down the straightaway. So by doing this, I'm ensuring that the car has the best shot. So we're just gonna snap it in here. And then I'll double check all this on the track too. I'll put it in the slot and I'll run it forward. And I'm looking at the front O-rings. I'm looking at the rear slip-ons. Just making sure that everything's the best that it can be, especially on a Viper jet. Cause that's how I want, that's how I know I'm gonna be as fast as I can on race day. So all we have left to do on this car today is put a splash of oil on the pinion and each side of the gear. And then actually on this car too, I'm just gonna put a little dab of oil on the, the nipple of the pinion so that if it comes into contact with the T-Boss, it has some lube there for it. And that's our car. Just check everything, leave quite a bit of front end slop, but check your rules for how much you're allowed, measure your overall. That's about 20 thousandths right there, so we're, we should be within spec still. Rear end looks great, motor spins free, and then just make sure I'm starting in neutral timing. All right, well it looks like we're ready to hit the track here with this. Um, I'm just gonna pull a body from stock. We'll run on this guy today, and let's see what we can do. Let's go over to the track. Okay, so here we are at the track. Got our Viper Jet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna inspect these O-rings and the rear slip-ons right now. They already feel great. I wanna make sure they look good, and they do. They just look great. Okay, so throw our orange DP body on here. Tracks, tracks dirty, I haven't run any laps on it, so we'll probably run a couple laps and then clean the tires and then get on it. I'm hoping for this car to run around a 420. Uh, that's a really fast Viper Jet, runs about a 390 to a 40 on this layout on 12 volts, so 420 is a good number to shoot for. We'll see what we can do, so let's clean the tires. Okay, so really nursing it, 5.0. 
I know the tires are dirty. Yep, they got some some lint on them. Okay. Now let's push it, see what we can do. Do 10 laps. Okay, so we'll just end it there, that test session. So, car feels great. Let's see what we ran. So let's see, we ran 410. That was our fast lap, which is great. So, first lap 480, 436, 434, 32, 430, and then it just went haywire, 413 and 410. So, what happened there was, I actually just started giving it more through here. I kept my median RPM and speed up through here. The car could handle it in yellow, which was great. And then coming out of this turn right here, I pretty much was wide open out of there. And that's, that's a difference of uh, two tenths on the lap right there. It's all right there. So, as always, it's better than expectations. I think I need to raise my expectations. Let's see if we can get this car into a 4.0. Whoa. Traction roll. So these cars look stuck, but I'm actually really, really having to give a lot of input to keep it from crashing. I'm feathering it through this technical section right there. And then the car comes off. It can't hold that turn wide open. Well, that lap was a 409. And I'm I'm giving it all I got. That's a neutral timing. Let's see if we can give it a little bit more leg down the straightaway with advanced timing. And uh, hopefully it doesn't make it jump out of the slot in the turns. Put that one on all the way. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, just a little bit, a little too hot through there. Ooh. Oh, push a body pin out or something. Let's see. So something happened there that the car didn't like. Let's see, magnet pop out? Yep, okay, so that's what happened. So I don't know if you can see this, but right there, that magnet is up and it's causing the, it's hitting the armature actually and causing the car to go slower. So what we're gonna do is just pop that back down. Motor's freed up again. You can actually RPM again. Okay, so that's a good, good thing to happen. All right, let's put this back on. Let's do a few more laps and See if we can get it down there. 4099 is the best so far. Ooh, ooh, that was a hot one.
Nope, I just, I don't have it in me today to... But I'm not disappointed, that's a fast car. So that's what we we're able to do today. A lot of crashes since that 4.0, but let's see. I'm really happy with this car today. So that was the best string of laps when we first started. So dirty track, 5.0, cleaned the tires on 17 lap, and then it was all business from there. So I wanted a 420 out of this car. It went 410, 409. A good race lap under pressure without crashing. Like a lap I know the car wouldn't come off on, probably 430, 435 would be comfortable. Uh, these are like qualifying laps, but overall I'm happy. Still my favorite class. Just it's a little bit different than magnet racing. The rear end steps out in the corners. You have a lot more throttle input. I was running just a Professor Motor controller with the brake off. I took the brake off just so that the car wouldn't feel jerky when I let off the throttle in the corners and upset it at all. So uh, it was a really good combination. So about think like a $45 controller. These cars start at $49.99 without the body and they're built to spec just like we did here today. But that's it for the video today. Let's meet, I'll meet you back over at the, uh, the lounge area and we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, so wrapping up today's video. Today we built a 12 volt Viper Jet, brass weighted car. Uh, I'll put the tech sheet or the setup sheet for this car online when I post the video and you can check out all the parts we use on it. Uh, this car is exactly how it would come from the store. Same tires, same chassis, everything, and it's ready to run. Our track is about 15 thousandths rail height, 17 thousandths wide, and it's a 56 foot lap. So we went 409 on it. 410, 420s on it were really good laps, comfortable, and it was just a real well performed car, and that's right out of the box, really. So, I hope you enjoyed today's video and have a great rest of your week, and see you back here next week for our next video.